is electric. Hi everyone, it's early Sunday morning. I thought I'd pop out to the garage and do a very quick update video for you, letting you know how we're getting on after the first few days of having extra Pylon Tech batteries installed in our uh, home storage configuration connected to our Victron inverter, which is uh, just slightly out of uh, sight of the camera. Sorry about that. I also mentioned in the previous video that I'll give you an update as to how we actually connected these different sized and different age Pylon Tech batteries. So let's do that first before I give you an update of how it feels having this extra storage. So yes, Pylon Tech batteries are a bit of a DIY looking solution, but they're actually a very slick, very reliable battery configuration that's flexible because the BMS system, the computer side of what's inside the battery, is backward compatible to the older batteries. So I've got US3000 batteries, and they came in varieties of US3000 A, B, and C, I believe. And then there's US5000 that I've purchased, and I've got those working together. But the even older versions are US2000. And then there are other models of Pylon Tech batteries as well, and they all interconnect to each other. The trick, the trick of getting them actually to work is to have them in a hierarchy of how old the firmware is, the BMS system. So they might be backward compatible, but the one at the top, address number one, if you're setting addresses, but the one that first connects to your inverter needs to be the newest version of firmware that there is. So for me, that's the US 5000s. Then as you connect down the chain, the uh, older batteries, the older firmware, the older BMS needs to be lower down that chain. So for me, I've got three US 5000s, then I've got five US 3000s afterwards. And that works because the firmware is backwards compatible. If I put the US 3000 at the top and the US 5000 at the bottom, apparently that won't work. So it's not something I did. It's not something I tried. If I had US 2000 batteries, then they would need to be further down the chain below the US 3000s. And the same for if you've got A, B and C versions of them. The newer firmware needs to be higher in the chain to make sure that the backward compatibility of the BMS actually works. It's one of those things also, you see a lot of online discussions about do they work or don't they work, and some people saying they don't because that's the experience they've had. But if you follow the instructions and look at the descriptions from Pylon Tech themselves, if they say it's compatible, it is compatible, but there's clearly some rules for how you connect them to make sure that they are compatible. The next thing is... Uh the stacks and whether they're evenly balanced. I can't actually find anything specifically online that says that they have to be in balance. Now, so it might well be, um, and in theory, in practice, it's best to have them stacked uh, to similar levels. So if you've got two strings of batteries in two rack cabinets, then how much capacity is in this one versus this one? For me, I've had um, different levels of capacity to the difference of one whole battery in this cupboard that's uh, more than what's in the other cabinet. So about three, three and a half kilowatt hours of storage difference between the racks is what I've actually configured and I've had no issues with. But I've also found nothing to indicate that if I'd had six kilowatt hours difference between the two or nine, then would it have made any difference? Uh, I'm really not sure. Um, I'm not sure if I would want to try. So it's in best practice, maybe, to try and make sure they're as even as possible. And that's what I've done. Um, I've got uh, just under 15 kilowatt hours in one and just over 17 kilowatt hours in the other. And that's working absolutely fine. But the third one, the third item for compatibility and getting these disparate systems connected, these different Pylon Tech batteries, is the voltage. When you buy a new battery and you come to install it, it might arrive with 60 or 70 percent uh, state of charge, whereas your batteries might be at 90 percent state of charge. So th there is detail online that Pylon Tech wants to see the voltage at a very similar level before they're actually connected. So how did I actually do that? The first thing, obviously, is I know the state of charge of my batteries before I disconnect them. So my old cabinet of the US 3000s, I knew that they were about 90, 92% and the voltage was about 50, 50.9, 51, around, around that ballpark. So I knew the ballpark of voltage and state of charge that uh, I was aiming at to get the others online. So what we did was when we connected these batteries together, I turned off 
the old ones, the US 3000s, so that when we first came online with the Victron inverter, there was only the US 3000s, the 15 kilowatt hours of storage. Then I could see what the state of charge was of those batteries, and then I could charge them to the same level. So that's exactly what we did. We brought them online, charged them up to the same level to just over 90%, then turned them all off again. When all the batteries were DC connected together and network connected together with their uh, RJ45 cables, it was time to turn them all on. So turning them all on, there's one string, so the physical batteries are all on, but not connected to the inverter, so still isolated from the inverter. They're on, powered amongst themselves in their own network. That allows the BMS to balance the batteries itself, and that's part of the BMS system. So you turn all the batteries on, they're only connected to each other, they're not connected to an outside source, so they're not going to charge or discharge. And basically the bal balancing happens automatically inside the Pylon Tech environment. So it says in the online description that you should leave them for 15 minutes to let them settle and let them balance before you connect them to your inverter. But I knew that our voltage was very, very similar. So I only left ours for five minutes. So we let them settle for five minutes. Then we connected them into the Victron system. So that's about it, really. It is not a complicated thing. You shouldn't be fearful of adding extra pylon tech batteries and how to do it. It's very simple stuff. Balance them as much as you can between any stacks. Connect them in the right order so that the BMS starts with the newest one at the top of the string going down and balance the voltage before you actually connect them online. So whether ours were uh, completely balanced or not, what I noticed was as soon as we brought them online with the Victron inverter, it just took a couple of moments, a few minutes again for them to balance out perfectly. So it, it looks like, to me, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be in perfect balance. I don't know if there's a threshold or not, but uh, it must certainly coped very well. It would have been interesting to try it as a test to just to plug them in at different state of charge and different voltages and see what happened and how long it took. But I wanted to follow the instructions and do it properly and do it as well as possible. So I can't go back in time and I can't redo it. But anyway, I would definitely encourage anyone thinking of adding more Pylon Tech batteries to the configuration to, to do so because it's quite easy to do it. I was waiting for my last uh, two US 3000s to come online and that was because I needed a longer DC set of concatenation cables. And those arrived on Thursday. They were connected on Friday and we're up and running now with the full 32 kilowatt hours of storage. Obviously, I've seen it on paper as to how big our battery is and how much spare capacity we're going to have. But it is always different when you turn it on and it's physical and it's real and you experience it. And it has been um, interesting to see that 10% of the top especially, that's what I think I misjudged. I didn't really think about it in my mind, that 10% of 32 kilowatt hours is a bigger headroom gap at the top, and therefore that will take longer and be harder to fill on solar. So I probably won't be filling to 100% as often as I did before, because it will take longer trickle charging at the same rate to get to 100% when there's twice as much in that 10% at the top. So the other thing is, if I discharge the batteries only down to 10%, I know the batteries I've got can go down to nine, can go down to 5% state of charge. But if I go down to 10, which is what they're currently set to, and I'm only charging to 90, that's 80% in the middle that I'm using. So 80% of 32 is 24 point something, 25 kilowatt hours. So that's actually going to be easier to charge on AC and solar than I thought, because it's not 32 kilowatt hours I'm trying to fill. It's only 24 to 25 kilowatt hours. So if I discharge all the way down to 10% and want to charge all the way back to 90%, I need about 25 kilowatt hours. And if I can get 20, 21 kilowatt hours from the grid using Octopus Intelligent Go, the six hours that I have at cheap rate, that's the majority of it. And then I haven't got very much to top up thereafter on solar. So this is actually going to work out a bit better. I started to think that I was massively oversizing these batteries. And the first thing that I've noticed now that they're online is I'm coming to terms with the fact that it's not actually massively oversized. If I'm saving 10% at the bottom and saving 10% at the top, that bit in the middle is going to be very comfortable. So, yeah. I've been discharging the battery more for the last few days. Um, I've been setting it to about two kilowatts of export when I get to 4.30 in the afternoon to try and help the grid. If the grid is at peak time, then that's a good time to export. It's good for me to practice doing that at that sort of time. 
So I'm exporting two kilowatts um, from about 4.30, and I'll leave that until midnight, um, until we then start charging. So I'm constantly exporting two kilowatts of power. And it, it I, wouldn't, I was about to say it hasn't dented the battery, but it, obviously it has. Um, it went down to 50%. So, um, yeah, I can export way more than two kilowatts of power for a good seven hours two kilowatts, seven hours, 14 kilowatt hours. Yeah, that's going to be around the half of the battery, isn't it? Plus some base load as well. So it's it's quite surprising. It, it has surprised me that all, although I knew on paper what I was getting and I knew um, the extra capacity was going to do a lot for me, it has been quite enlightening and rewarding to see the extent of export that I can handle over the evening and not discharge the battery fully so yeah winter should be very very easy because i'm not going to be running at two kilowatts my heating system um, being air to air heating air conditioning units they're a heat pump so i'm getting you know three four yeah three or four cop value in the heating until the temperatures drop to zero and below etc and then i'm probably only getting two point something but uh, they're very, very efficient. So when the house gets to temperature and the heating's running overnight, which it would be, it would be at temperature, the heating's going to be using three, four, five hundred watts continuously. So if I'm capable of exporting two kilowatts continuously for seven hours, then consuming heating of 500 watts for seven hours is going to be nothing to the system it's hardly going to dent it so that's a, a much better use of the term denting the battery so yeah this export test has been very good to see what's going to happen so i should be able to run my heating system um well into the night without any concerns and then it's going to recharge back up on octopus intelligent go which means then the heating would be running on octopus intelligent go too, drawing from the grid anyway there you go um yeah adding more pylon tech batteries has been it's been brilliant. It's been nice. Uh, I haven't got the bill for it yet. Hopefully they're not going to charge me too much for installing these. It wasn't too big a job. Um, we had a few slight issues, shall we say, uh, getting it installed, but that's mostly inexperience from the installer. They're not, they don't install Palantec batteries very often. So this was a custom special install for me, uh, which I'm very, very grateful for. So I hope you enjoyed this update video, and uh, if you're thinking of adding more pylon techs, hopefully this gives you some reassurance, because that's what we look for, isn't it? Can you, can't you, what do you have to do? It's good to look for some reassurance about how somebody else has done it to know that it should probably work and work really well for you. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more energy-related videos. Bye for now.